Hi, my name is Brad Homer. I live here in Jacksonville, Florida. I've been working in IT for my entire adult life. I actually started writing programs when I was a boy in 1979. Uh, the reason is that we had a business computer which didn't have a lot of games available for it. So if I wanted a new game, I had to go to the library and check out a book with uh, basic code listings in it if I wanted a new game to play. So fast forward to, to now, I'm an integration architect working for the same company I've been with for the past 16 years. Uh, I started working for them in 96 as a uh, lead programmer. And so it's been a long time coming for my computer science degree from uh, FSU and I'm very much looking forward to that next summer. And enough about me. Why am I here today? I'm here to talk about the Lua scripting language. So what is Lua? Lua is a scripting language which is simple, powerful, lightweight, embeddable. It was developed in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil at the uh, Pontifical Catholic University of uh, Rio de Janeiro by uh, three guys whose names I cannot pronounce, so I'm going to allow uh, Google Translate pronounce it for me. Roberto Jerusalemsi, Luiz Henrique de Figueiredo, Andy Valdemar Celis. All right, well, thank you, uh, Google Translate. Anyway, they're, uh, they speak Portuguese down there um, at this university, uh, predominantly. Most of the information that I got for this presentation was uh, received at uh, Lua.org, which is the primary home for uh, the Lua scripting language. TechGraph was the primary department within the computer science uh, department at uh, Puck Rio that they originally created Lua and Lab Lua is now the current home uh, for Lua uh, online and is where uh, all the documentation is kept and it's very excellent documentation there's a lot of documentation there uh, many books um, the Book sales for the most recent documentation supports the Lua project online. It is a free open source uh, software as we expect uh, when it's being hosted by a, a university. It is uh, currently offered under the MIT license and the, the current version is uh, 5.2.1. You may wonder where did the name Lua come from? Well, Lua is the word for moon in Portuguese and it is a proper name, so it is not an acronym. And the designers of Lua are pretty adamant about the name Lua. It's kind of funny on their uh, site, they, they stress it quite uh, adamantly that Lua is a proper name and it should be used properly and not get it confused with acronyms out there for LUA, which uh, there's a number of them. Lua's predecessors uh, at TechGraph were the data description and configuration languages, um, Sol and Dell, for uh, simple object language and data entry language. And incidentally, Sol is the, the word for sun in Portuguese, so you can kind of see where the, the, the moon came from, the, the sun and the moon. I think this quote sums up Lua's purpose very nicely. It was written by Roberto, who's one of the primary uh, writers for the documentation for Lua. And in this quote, he's basically saying that Lua is intended for small to medium programs created by small groups of programmers. And it wasn't intended for huge programs. And because of this, they wanted to minimize the amount of redundancy and artificial restrictions placed on uh, the programmer and the language. So. Uh, to keep everything as simple and as um, concise as possible. Lua is a virtual machine bytecode interpreter with just 20,000 lines of code. And when it's built with the Lua standard libraries, it compiles to a footprint of just 182K, which is very small. It's dynamically typed as uh, most scripting languages are, I would say, um, eight basic types listed here. 
uh, includes uh, a thread type for supporting collaborative multi-threading, uh, the primary sophisticated um, data type within Lua is the table, um, and we'll talk about more of that uh, in a little bit. Also included in Lua's features is lexical scoping, automatic memory management, incremental garbage collection, and also has very um, simplistic C API, which is easy to use. Uh, it's easy to call Lua from within C, and it's also possible to call C programs from uh, within Lua. Lua is object-oriented. However, the way it's implemented in Lua is a little bit different than you would see in C++ or Java. They're actually using the table structure, uh, table object, as the basis for being able to implement what you could call a class. It's not There's really no concept of a class in Lua, but instead it uses tables. So, for example, um, to implement inheritance, you can add and remove methods to a table object. So by doing that sort of uh, interaction within the Lua code, you can actually achieve things that look like inheritance. So it's, it's really table manipulation within Lua at, under a different name, and it, it looks like object-oriented code. And we'll actually look at an example here in a couple of slides. This next screen shows the Lua evolution over time, starting with 1.0 in 1993 and moving up to um, the last couple of years. Uh, we hit 5.1 and 5.2's actually come out. That's the current version. But you can see over time how it's added quite a few significant features uh, consistently over the last nearly 20 years. Here we've got uh, object-oriented programming supported early on in the life cycle, and full lexical scoping didn't come about until looks like version five. So that's really pretty recent that that and booleans and, and garbage collection, which are pretty significant, uh, were actually added to Lua. Here on this screen, we've got a very simple example, a hello world example for Lua. It's literally as simple as opening a notepad uh, document and typing in what you see here, print, hello world, inside of uh, parentheses and quotes. And then once you've saved it in notepad, you just go to the command line and type Lua space in the name of the, the file you just created and it'll print hello world. So it really couldn't be any simpler than that. The class example we've got on this page shows a little bit about how you would be using a table to create an account class. And I've got class in quotes because, again, class is really not a concept uh, that is covered in Lua, but rather the documentation for Lua tells you how to implement object-oriented programming using tables effectively. And here we've got a couple of functions, which are methods within this account class, so to speak. And it's using some object-oriented notation, which is really the, it's referring to the object instances of, of this table, which are behaving like a class. On this screen, we've got an example of the C API integration. This is a very simple C program that is using the Lua libraries and is calling uh, some Lua commands to create a table and do some basic string manipulation. So as you can see, it's very simple and straightforward to integrate Lua into a C program. Lua is very popular uh, in the world. It's reached a critical mass of uh, success uh, through many countries. It's very popular for games as well as uh, industrial applications, multimedia applications, anything that uh, requires a interpretive scripting language or can benefit from using an interpreted uh, scripting language embedded under the covers. Two of these applications on the screen I want to call out in particular that I have quite a bit of experience with.
Uh, one is this Baldur's Gate game, which was released in 1998. It is an extremely popular game. has been uh, around for a long time now, and it's still uh, you can still purchase it on Amazon. And actually, the original release of Baldur's Gate was re-released as an enhanced edition just this past week. This uh, Tuesday or Wednesday this past week, it was re-released with uh, additional features that folks expect nowadays, things like widescreen support and support for your iPad. So it's uh, it's one of my favorite games. It's probably the favorite game that I have uh, ever. And until I did the research for this uh, presentation, I didn't even know that uh, I, Baldur's Gate uses Lua. I knew it had a scripting language embedded in it, but I thought it was something that uh, Bioware, the uh, software developer, had actually created for the game. But uh, lo and behold, it's actually Lua that they used uh, 14 years ago embedded in this this application. And what's really remarkable about Baldur's Gate is that when it was released in 98, the, the average computer for uh, home PCs was maybe a 486 or Pentium 5, which Compared to today, it's not a very powerful computer. However, this game uh, encompassed content for six different CDs. Now, 40 megabytes was probably the average size of a hard disk in the late 90s. So if you're using over three gigs of that for a game, that's pretty significant uh, portion. That's a significant portion of your resources that you're using uh, on your computer, as well as the CPU processing power is not that great, and yet all of the interaction in this 100-hour-plus game is being orchestrated and controlled by Lua code under the covers, so it's pretty amazing. And that itself is pretty amazing, but then when you consider World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft originally eight years ago or so had a original de uh, developing budget of $60 million, and that was just the initial release. That doesn't include the five or six additional expansions that have been released for it over the past eight years, and I'm sure they've spent many times that original $60 million for development uh, for this game, and hundreds, if not thousands of hours uh, for each user that has played, the, the millions of users that have played and continue to play World of Warcraft. It's a multi-billion dollar international business. So, you know, in and of itself, it's quite a, an amazing feat. And to consider that under the covers, you've got Lua all throughout it is uh, quite amazing. They have well-deserved their 2011 Game Developer um, Programming Tool Frontline Award that they received. So with that, I think we're about out of time, and thanks for watching.